trying to back it out or what's the plan? Hey, Saturday, April 22, and we've got an active willet roll in progress. Here, come, come take a shot at this tire. Some of them do and some of them don't. This one oh, carnage. Wow. It kind of dragged her right yeah, to where she did. sat. <laughs> Joe said this was a 52? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'd stay with it. This is a big, big semi truck wrecker. So, little of the history of this. We're out on. Oh, that tag. Okay. Yeah, so. I thought you were meeting the license plate. 47 miles an hour for maximum speed. 17,000 pounds. Fascinating. Yeah, so this old thing. They had the salvage out here, and when they widened the highway, they moved the yard. And now you can see the yard's closed, and this is kind of one of the last remaining vestiges of the history and the operation. Old Rudy was a bugler in the Korean War, and then he survived that and came back to start the operation and I'm sure this thing rescued a lot of semi wrecks off the highway. We had spotted it out in one of the abandoned properties and it was totally pinned in and now it's been moved to where it sits and sold at auction to this guy and today's moving day. You see our uh Tow bar? I see your tow bar. This is a clandestine towing apparatus. We just have to hook it up to the truck. <laughs> yep. Trying to back it out, or what's the plan? Yeah, pull it out with these. Uh, oh, okay. First, okay. First, we're gonna go look through tires and wheels. I've already found some good ones. Okay, let's look. I'm gonna go grab my gloves. I gotta peep the inside for just a minute. 80 mile an hour speedometer, which it'll use half of. The black says high speed 47. 47, yeah. And a 3500 tachometer that it'll probably also use about half of. Little semi jump seats in there. Gordon, I think we've had a lot of vehicles that we wish could tell stories, but this would probably be about number one on that list. It's get, definitely got some stories. This video will be wrecker retrieval and junkyard picks. There's always a bit of rabbit holes on one of these deals. Uh, there was a part number. Uh, vent shades. Four door sedan Fleetwood Burl. 779. <laughs> yeah. I think that's 80s Chevy pickup, but it's aftermarket. Oh. Door handle city. We have got the lights. Looks like 70s GM nonsense. 
Uh, that should be Ford. Is there just one? You can take the take the screws off the pad later, and there should be a molded number in the pad. Dodge van. And there will be comments. The one guy just tosses stuff around. <laughs> Sixty-four Plymouth headlight rings, kind of hammered. Yeah, but this is a sixty-four. This is wagon only tail light. Guy Newton used to have one of them. He drove around. Oh, I see something. Yeah, 73 Impala and Caprice taillight lenses. Those are good. Oh, yeah, the place has been pillaged. There's nothing good left. <laughs> 80s mirror head. Yeah, so Rudy had a thing of going around the entire damaged freight shipments and other than my dad probably the single best set of salesmanship skills i've ever seen rudy salesmanship is in buying stuff or uh like knowing knowing before he bought it who he was gonna call and sell it to oh. My dad, you could say, he's just more of a skilled negotiator. He knows the price, and he wants the price, and if you don't like the price, then you walk. It's just obstinance. <laughs> uh, you're not going to like it. <laughs> You're not going to like that one either. 73 Monte Carlo and 78 Velari wagon. Jeez, what's the, this? 73 Monte Carlo. You, you like that one. It goes with your hat. Show them your hat. <laughs> oh, here it's Bill. That's your visor? Yeah. <laughs> Take off your hat and show them that because it blends in too well. Yeah, see what we got. Yep. All right, put them back on. <laughs> mm-hmm.
Daytona. Yep. Grab the rest of the bottles and. Yeah. Well, I'll get with you sometime, yeah. On the gravel, you didn't know how egg-shaped those tires were, but here on the smooth pavement, you can really tell they're kind of thumping. It looks like he's doing pretty good. I think he'll be able to get her home. This was the start of a long trip fraught with several hazards, but Joe is the type of person who has an irrepressible spirit that just doesn't give up, and the truck made it home to join its friends in the row at the rest ranch. The locked brake on the rear didn't give any trouble, and the tire was easily removed to get it out of the way. The truck became increasingly difficult to tow with some resistance, and while the easy choice and the correct choice would have been to pull the axle shafts, we ended up cutting the drive shaft. Not really the best, but not ruined beyond repair. Even though we took it slow on side roads, the old tires started shedding pieces of the tread, but the carcasses inside held, and there wasn't any issue with any of them losing pressure. You can see that even with the rear axle chained up, the angle wasn't really the best, and it caused the tire to rub on the fender, creating a hot spot. All's well that ends well, and the old truck made it home. This old king of the road can still find its place back on the highway throne once again. It's been about 20 years since it ran. The old Cummins turbo diesel engine could likely go again with a little bit of TLC and coaxing. It was a great day to be part of a chapter of this truck's story and really just opens up the question of who will write the next chapter for it. Although the next time it's moved probably would be better on a flatbed semi-trailer.